Well, welcome all to the off-grid cabin on this week of just terrible wet and drizzly overcast weather we've been having and it's been a real pain because I want to get my shed built and I can't get my shed built with all of this wet, windy and terrible weather. Look at the ground there with all the water laying around. That's how much rain we've had. So in this video, what I want to cover is a question that I'm starting to get asked a lot more than more people are watching my channel now is why do I run so many different off-grid systems? Why don't I just stick to one? Well, there's a real simple answer to that, but we're going to delve into it a lot deeper and have a look at what all those systems run. So the 48 volt system, I'm going to start with that because that system runs a lot heavier loads than what a lot of people realize. So what we'll do is we're going to have a look at one of those loads and how I tie that in with my managing my power. So this is the hot water service for my bathroom. That, that feeds the bathroom and the shower with hot water. That's a 50 litre electric hot water service with an element that pulls 2,400 watts. Now I have this running on a timer. We'll have a look at that one in a second. So that comes on at 12 o'clock midday when the sun's at its highest. And that runs for one and a half hours to heat up my hot water for a nice hot shower. So that pulls quite a bit of power from my system. So if we move over to the power corner here in the cabin and up here, we have our distribution panel for the power in the cabin. And the 48 volt system feeds this panel. No other system other than the 48 volt system feeds this panel. So the panel here has got our main breaker, or sorry, our main isolation switch, and all these breakers here. Now once you've noticed, there is no RCD here. That's because every one of these breakers here are actually RCBOs, so their own individual earth leakage and overcurrent breaker in every one of these, your little test button down there. So on the right hand side here, that is our breaker and RCD for the hot water service and I have the timer here for the hot water service as well. So I have the hot water service turned on, it turns itself on through the timer at midday at 12 o'clock. That's when the sun's at its highest. Now this runs for two hours and turns off. Now it only takes about an hour to an hour and a half to heat the hot water service but I let it run for two hours so it's got, make sure it has definitely heated that water up. Then it clicks itself off and it does not come back on until the next day. So you're thinking, well, how do you get hot water in the morning? Well, I only have one shower and I have a shower at night. So by the time I'm ready to have a shower at night time, the water's nice and hot. I get in, I have a quick shower, I get out. That's it, I don't need any more hot water after that. The hot water service for the kitchen is different. And this is the hot water service for the kitchen, which is an instantaneous LP gas hot water or on-demand propane hot water, depending on what country you're from, is how you call it. And this runs into the kitchen because I'm using hot water throughout the day and not in the kitchen where when I have a shower, I'm only using that hot water once. So I use the electric for the shower and the LP gas in the kitchen. Oh, and I forgot to mention as we're getting some rain, the 48 volt system also runs the power to the big water pumps here. So I've got one water pump there, and we have another water pump up at the big water tank up there. So those water pumps pull 600 watts at, uh, what well, doesn't matter what voltage is, watts or watts. So they pull 600 watts of power each. So they also run from the 48 volt system. So if we come into my bathroom laundry area, well, we can see I have a washing machine. Now that washing machine is fed by the power point there, which is fed by the 48 volt system. Now also in my laundry and uh, bathroom area, I have this full size, well not full size, but upright freezer here. And this freezer here 
is also fed by the 48 volt system. So we can see when we start to add all of this up, electric hot water service, the cabin power points, big size freezer, washing machine, microwave, all the kitchen appliances, water pumps, you can see it starts to add up with what the 48 volt system needs to do. It needs to do a lot more than what you might think it needs to do. So that's now where we get to our 24 volt system. So the 24 volt system, let's have a quick look at that. And what does that run? So the 24 volt system is also housed in the power shed running a couple of 12 volt, 120 amp hour batteries in series to go to 24 volt and running that through a 1800 watt continuous duty cycle inverter. So for now, I have switched the 24 volt system over to running everything here in my little lounge room. So it runs the computer system. So the main gaming computer it charges up to lap the laptop. It runs these little lights that shine on my power systems for doing the videos. It also runs my television and the little stereo for the television. FYI, I've also got a little electric heater here that 48 volt system runs sometimes when I have a cold, sunny morning. So this is a distribution power block which runs its own dedicated RCBO there, a 15 or 16 amp RCBO breaker. And then that I've been using it to run different devices here in the kitchen. So I run the air fryer, the electric kettle. I don't normally run that. That pulls a little bit too much power. I'm going to get back to that in a second. It runs the toaster and it used to run my microwave up there. But what I've got now is I've got the power station that I'm testing out plugged into this box here. And that is what is running this distribution block is that iTech World power station. Hence is why I can use the kettle here. And it leads me to, well, why am I running power stations? Well, this is another option to run off-grid power without having big setups like what I have. Now, in this, shall I call it, totalitarian country of ours, the regulations are becoming so much more strict of what we can do in just about anything, but especially in the power side. And we've got battery subsidies coming in now. So the Energy Commission is really clamping down on people running off-grid systems. My opinion, they want you connected to the grid paying a power bill, but that's my opinion. However, it's got so strict now, it is now becoming nearly impossible for someone like me that doesn't have an electrical license. I'm, I've got a lot of electrical experience, but I don't have an electrical license, so I've got to stay within the boundaries and the codes that we can do as unlicensed electricians, and that has now changed, and it's making it nearly impossible to now start to run 48 volt systems. So I'm experimenting and having a look at bringing in some of these systems here to see if that's an option for future of running off-grid power and not being connected to the grid. So that leads me down to the 12 volt system. What does the 12 volt system run? Well, if you haven't been watching my videos, I will explain it. Pretty simple, the 12 volt system is here and is what I call my test system. So I run, at the moment I've got this 1000 watt inverter hooked up to it. I don't use that very much, but I use that for testing. I can also plug other inverters in for testing. The main thing that this runs is my 12 volt fridge freezer and my diesel heater. That is the two things that run this all the time. And then charging up phones and laptops, or not so much the laptop and tablets and so on. So that's what the 12 volt system does. And yeah, there's also my little caravan that has its own system in it as well, although we're not going to be covering that in this video. So 
I hope that explained a little bit to some of my new subscribers that are looking at all the systems that I've got here and saying, why aren't you just one run one big system and be done with it? And I could definitely do that, and a 48 volt system is big enough to do that. But it's like asking somebody that's keen on motorbikes why they have more than one motorbike. Well, why do I have more than one solar system and batteries and voltages? That's because my hobby, and this is what this channel's about. And without this, I can't bring you some of these wonderful videos. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and wait for the next awesome video that's coming out on the Off Grid channel. And here's a little bit of extra content at the end of the video for my loyal subscribers that watch my videos right through to the end. So I'll reward you with a little bit of extra content. I'm going to edit this video up and get it out to you. So while I'm editing, I want an editing cup of Joe. So, because I'm testing out that portable power station and this is this is why I'm doing it at the moment with everything so I'm going to turn the inverter on and the inverter is on now that is now sending power down to this power block down here and I'm just going to turn on my kettle so my kettle is now running off that power station that's what I'm doing to test the power station out Let's have a bit of a look and see what my kettle. Turn the phone around for you. Let's have a look. So the kettle's drawing uh, 1800 watts on the kettle. So that will uh, make my coffee for me while I'm editing up this video. And then probably for lunch, I'll turn on the, um, what do you call that thing? Air fryer, that's it. So a little bit of extra content rewarding you for watching my video right through to the end.